I think probably the most important factor, the number one thing that you can do today, the hottest topic, social networking. We're going to spend a ton of time on it. So what I want you to do is I want you to turn to the person next to you, shake their hand, and introduce yourself. Do it right now. Go on. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's enough of that. Hello. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. Give yourself a big round of applause. Try the veal. Um, you are now all, you know what? You are now all social networking experts. Congratulations. Certificates are in the mail. I think that's the one thing that a lot of people are looking for right now. They're looking for that, you know, they're looking for that pill. Tension, please. Thank you, Gwen. Um, they're looking for that pill. They're looking for the, the Xanax. They're looking for the Ritalin. They're looking for something that they can just pop right now and get over it. And it's going to make it all better. And it's going to be easy. It's going to be great. It ain't going to happen. Okay? And if you've got any of those pills, please share them with me first. <laughs> But, what's that, quaaludes, what? Stop it, thing. Um, anyway, but, so one of the things that I want to do is, and before I start, start my part here, I got a really deep question I want all of you guys to ask right now. I want you to close your eyes for just a second, okay? Literally, close your eyes. So think that you're not in real estate for a minute, okay? And you're working in a company. You're making 65 grand a year. You've got a wife, she works as well. You're sitting there and you're looking to buy your first home. You hear all this stuff on the news, tax credits, financing, mortgage rates, things like that. You know that there's been cutbacks in your company. People have been laid off. Your wife's company as well. And I want you to ask yourself right now, as you open your eyes, would I choose to work with me as a real estate agent if I was looking to buy a house? That is the question you need to ask yourself right now. Because people are scared. This is a serious freaking matter. The average income in the United States is $42,000 per, per person. And that, I thought that was way high. $42,000 per person. So if we, we're gonna buy a $250,000 home. I'm really bad at math, but I think that somewhere around, that would take six years of salary to buy a $250,000 home. We all realize that $250,000 is still, regardless how you slice it, a quarter of a million dollars, correct? Once again, are you the agent that you would wanna work with and spend a quarter of a million dollars? So, with that cheery thought, what I wanted to do is I wanted to ask you something. What is the number one reason why someone will choose to work with you as a client? Everybody. Experience. Trust. Experience. Trust. Anybody else? If, some, if they already said yours, say it again. Good body. Knowledge. Knowledge. Okay. I personally think that all of this falls under trust. I think this is something that has been taken lightly over the last couple of years. I think we talk about it a lot. I think it's become quite a buzzword. And I think that the question we have to ask ourselves right now is right along the lines of what are we the person that are we the agent that we would want to work with? Because honestly, if you could say that to me in a buyer presentation, if you could say I'm getting chills right now. If you could say that to me in a listing presentation and mean it, if Danny Glick could sit across from me and look me in the eyes with those deep, dark brown eyes of his. <laughs> and say, Matt, I'm the agent that I would list my house with. That, to me, I'm there. I'm there. 6%? Forget that. 7, man. You're worth it. But drive, and you drive a Prius? 8 for saving the planet. Thank you very much. But the trust element, I think, is so important right now because I don't know if you guys paid attention to the study, but the real estate profession isn't really well thought of. And what, what's gone on in the last year hasn't really helped anything. Okay? Somebody asked the question earlier about, you know, hey, um, 
you know, we're going to lose, take a bath on our house, we're going to lose 75 grand as you pull up in your shiny black 5 Series BMW. You know, this is hard. And so the question I think we need to ask ourselves is trust. I love this sentence here. This is from a, journey, uh, a guy who writes a blog called Journey of the Serial Entrepreneur. And he says, the key components of building trust are integrity, comp competence, consistent communication, genuine concern, and results. Anybody debate those? Those five things are pretty solid for me. If somebody presented these five pillars, that would build my trust. That's what it would support on. And that would help me work with the client. So the value of trust is your return on influence. In 2005, when we were going out and everybody was buying a home, me included, you know, I think I might go along with the whole body thing if I was single at the time with Thad and you wonder why, you know, there were very attractive women working at sales centers. Um, it, it, it was very easy. You know, we, there wasn't that element of trust. It wasn't such a difficult decision because everybody was selling and buying their homes. Now I think that you need to take a look at this and say trustworthy people, it's kind of like blind dating. How many times are you gonna set somebody up on a blind date when that first phone call that they get after the blind date is how in the hell could you set me up with that person? Okay, they're a little fearful of setting you up a second time. So the idea, this is, a, this is and this is brilliant, this is a woman named Liz Strauss who writes, who writes another blog, but she, she just sums this up beautifully and she goes, and to relate to our industry, trust is brave and vulnerable. Trust is not sparing my feelings. Trust is the hard truth spoken gently. Think about the news here. Think about the things that are going on in the economy. Think about the, 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 the Case Shiller Report. Any of these things, what's going on with home prices. This is exactly what this is talking about right here. Truth is the hard, or trust is the hard truth spoken gently. I don't want you walking in at the beginning of a listing presentation being like, boy, you lost a lot of money. Let me show you my listing book. This is you informing them. This is you telling them. This is you empathizing with them. So how do we use these five pillars to grow, earn, and improve our trust with clients every day? Because this right now, I mean, you guys are in the holiday season. You are going to more cocktail parties than people's homes and seeing more past clients right now than you probably will for the rest of the year, unless you have a client appreciation party. So how can we use this time right now to either build, repair, or instill trust with the people around us? Concern, how do we show or demonstrate concern? I think a lot of this, it comes down to listing, patience, empathy, interest, I think it can be demonstrated through testimonials. And I think understanding. If you're talking to somebody in an open house and, or somebody from sitting line, and you can't take the time to sit down with them and do a full-fledged proper buyer's interview, how does that make them feel? Does it make them feel like you're really concerned with them? Concerned with finding them the right house? I talked to Marianne and Niddle the other day who worked with a, was it $1,800 renter? The other day, she said it was one of the most rewarding things she had done for the last years. This is it. She is genuinely concerned helping this person find a place to live. Competence. How do we show or demonstrate our competence? I personally feel that in this climate right now, numbers. Number one thing. Number, number, sorry. I'm not stuttering. But numbers are the number one thing that I believe can build trust right now with regards to real estate. I think that knowing what's going on, not only on a national, but also a local and hyper-local market are your number one things that you could do in the real estate industry to gain trust and solidify it. I also teach the Asian metrics class, if you guys didn't know that, and that's about numbers. Um, knowledge, again, testimonials, Education, qualifications, and macro micro, which we just talked about. Rich actually said it the um, earlier in the year, which would you say the year of the year of the designation? It was 2008. I think that should go ahead. 
I think you guys should take advantage of every single learning and educational opportunity you possibly can get your hands on. And we are working really, really hard over the next 90 days to jam as many down your throat as possible. So stay tuned. Integrity, honesty, respect for others, respect for rules and quality. Integrity is something that can be demonstrated by you but shouldn't be reaffirmed by others, i.e. testimonials. I think testimonials, you've seen it in three things right here. You guys can put pictures of your people on your testimonial page on your website. I think that is the coolest thing ever. People are going to this because they want to see, are these people raving about rich like me? Can I identify with them? Okay? Communication. How do we show, demonstrate communication? Honest discussion, active listening, inform being an information source, sharing. This is so important. Communication, number one reason why somebody won't work with a real estate agent twice. 78% of people who will not work with the same real estate agent twice, their reason was lack of communication. We have tried very, very hard and we are continuing to do so on the website, putting together the automated searches that include the pending and sold and contingent, the listing mark or the listing report showing the online traffic. We are trying to do everything we possibly can to automate this for you to help you do your job better. But that communication still has to come from A to B. Result. How do we show or demonstrate result? I think that if you if you honestly have taken a well-priced listing and have a great days on market and a good sales price to list price, I would probably spend a I would spend a lot of money getting that statistic out to everybody around that area, if you want a listing in that area. Results, positive results are something to be talked about and highlighted today, and not just results as in sales and closings. You guys should tell every single one of your clients today, I went and spent two hours talking to the owners of the company some guy from Figment and my two coaches about what I can do to be a better agent for you next year. Your clients need to know that. They need to know that you're taking classes on agent metrics. They need to know that you're educating yourself on foreclosure properties. Open that line of communication and tell them that you are thinking outside the box and you are changing. So how do we put this into action? This is a little redundant, so we'll go quickly through it. Take interest in your clients. Ask the hard questions or concern. Are you planning a family in the future? How long are people staying in their houses now? Five years or longer? When does a kid start going to school? So if a woman's pregnant when you're going out, should schools be a discussion for you? If they're thinking about having a family, should a, fam should a school be in the discussion? Absolutely. This is you taking a general interest in their well-being, especially if you intend to work with that person again. Can you afford this one if you lose their job? Maybe not that blatant, but I put it out there for you. House poor. How many of you have a house poor conversation with your clients when they're buying their home? Probably one you should start having. Competence, knowledge in numbers. Agent metrics, how many people here know agent metrics? We're gonna have another class next week, and I'm not going anywhere for Christmas. So if you wanna come down, let's have a party. Eggnog for everybody. The App Properties Market Report, great way to get neighborhood data out to your clients. This is just a great way for you to look top level supply and demand, or top level supply and demand statistics, median sales prices out there. We're working, it should be by the end of January, you can drill down and put attached, detached, and beds and baths in there. So we are trying to make this as, uh, as, as granular as possible for you. Car fast stats. Kim Kerr, who, no, who brought it up in class today? Don Lynch. Don Lynch. Has, does everybody use these car fast stats? I'm sorry, I'm, it's awesome. It is awesome. I would check it out, write that down. The Wall Street Journal development blog. Anybody, just go ahead and type in Wall Street Journal, and we will, we will send this presentation out to all of you guys. So don't worry, it's not gonna go anywhere or anything like that. But the Wall Street Journal development blog is probably one of the best concise sources about national, national things. This is where I get a lot of my headlines for, like when they were uh, putting the guidelines in for the new short sale process and things like that. 
This is great information, and they don't lock it away in an archive, so you can actually send those articles out to your clients really easily. Case-Shiller Home Index. Everybody know about the Case-Shiller Home Index? Okay, the one thing I will, ca I will uh, little caveat there is when you're talking, you're looking at a lot of these numbers things, make sure you know what area they're talking about. Cranes <coughs> talks about Chicago as a five county area. They compare Joliet to Lake Bluff, unless they say otherwise. Case Schiller, Chicago metro area, okay? You want to make sure you know where they're pulling their data. <coughs> Ask the questions and look, look at the, read the fine print on there. Keeping current matters. This is probably the number one source for information that I have found in the last year. This is done by a friend of mine named Steve Harney, and I'm glad to call him a friend because he is probably one of the most recognized economists for real estate in the United States. He has a website put together called Keeping Current Matters. You can sign up for a free newsletter that he talks about what is going on in the market. The man is brilliant and he, pro and he provides you this information in a way that you can understand it. It is amazing. Training, education, and more education. Integrity, this is my new word, WWJ McD, which was, what would Janine McShay do? <laughs> That's all I'm saying for integrity, okay? So put yourself in. There's actually a book out there called WWGD, <coughs> What Would Google Do? And that's my pick for 2009. It's written by a guy named Jeff Jarvis. So the WWJM, J Mick D is what would Janine McShay do? Um, communication. Your coach's articles make a consistent communication plan. Tell them what you are learning, doing, share the appropriate information with them, and practice transparency. Transparency is a word that's tossed around a lot today. What that means is that you're not spinning the numbers. You are, it's the, remember the whole, don't shoot the messenger. You are providing information. You are not making the market happen. You know, the stock market crash cannot be traced back to that long. As, as much, as, no, I can't, maybe. Anyway, provide this and be, you know, don't, be, be open about it. Just provide the information to your client. Results, again, highlight accomplishments, showcase statistic, talk about challenging and overcome. So your actions, the last five things here, your actions, number one, there's a great photo. Learn the market, macro versus micro. Get it? Get it? Cool. One, learn the market. There is so much good information out there. Grab a couple of agents from your office and sit down and talk about it. Share it, bounce ideas off one another. This is what your clients need to hear. And it's free. Did I mention that? Free. Ginsu Steak Knives follow. Communicate what you find. And this was a lot, this was something that, uh, that uh, uh, I had somebody really point out that really liked it, um, was turning data into information. There's a lot of data out there. Try to boil it down into information for your clients. Three, make yourself discoverable by sh sharing your knowledge. Okay, social media is a huge buzzword. All I'm gonna tell you guys to do, go set up some profiles. If it allows you, Amazon, your Amazon profile will come up on the first page and sometimes it will beat your app properties listing because Amazon is a very, very highly trafficked site. You want people to see your information and track back to your website. Okay, so I would say any place that allows you to put together a profile, Amazon, Chicago Tribune, Wall Street Journal, Fast Company Magazine, yeah, uh, uh, Facebook, any of those things, LinkedIn, put together a profile so that you can at least be found. Practice active listening skills and provide answers. I've learned something being engaged for four years and together for eight, which I'm actually getting married this year, um, which I'm very excited about. But you don't talk when you listen. When you're listening, you shut up. I know, where was the cliff notes for that? Listen to what your clients are talking about. Let them talk to you. 
Listen to the office, listen to the sellers, listen to your buyers. They'll give you the answers. And the last thing is, please think outside the box. Get it, this is the box, and he's saying, please think outside me. Try doing it. Look at a company like Apple. If you haven't been to the Apple store down here on Michigan Avenue, especially during the holiday time, go in. It is the most amazing customer service you will ever experience in your life. You wanna try something else? Buy a Lexus. I don't even own one and I want one. I don't even want one, but I wanna be treated like that. What can you do and ask yourself this question, how could this be applied to my business? This is what smart people are doing. This is what innovative people are doing. This is what people are doing who are getting outside of their box and doing something differently. They're having a good experience and they're walking out and saying, hmm, how could I do that in my business? Don't look at the person next to you. Don't look at the market share leader in Lakeview and say, wow, what is he doing? Don't limit it to that. Think outside the box. Trust, build, earn, solidify trust with those around you daily. Try to see one thing that you do to either build, solidify, or earn trust daily. Thank you. <laughs>